guys, many blessings. Um, this is Joey, and I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about Friday the 13th. I was reading a really interesting article yesterday, and I thought I'd share that article below so you can go read for yourself. But there are plenty of articles or opinions or things of that nature surrounding the whole concept of Friday the 13th. And in modern popular culture, it's often considered to be unlucky. However, if you go back and research throughout history, or look at different sources, or start to critically examine where that modern interpretation of something has come from, you can find some really interesting information. Now, me personally, I've always been aware of Friday the 13th being known as Goddess Day, and it's not something I really ever questioned. I just understood that a lot of people considered it to be an unpopular day, an unlucky day. It was associated with horror movies and all the worst sort of things happening, as well as black cats, which is a very interesting use of sort of pagan archetype or stereotype or imagery that actually, if you stop and think about it, a black cat is most associated with what? Witches and which is being an archetype of female power that has received a lot of negative connotations. It's not to say that witches can't be male, they can, of course, I'm just talking about generalised stereotypes within modern popular society. So, I'm going to read to you a little bit from this article which I thought was really, really interesting. And the article is from the Huffington Post Online by Donna Haynes? Haynes? I'm not quite sure. I can't quite see her name from here. So, I'm going to read to you this bit that I found really interesting. 13 is certainly the most essentially female number. The number of menstrual cycles in a year, the approximate number of annual cycles of the moon, when Chinese women make offerings of moon cakes, there are to be 13 on the platter. It is the number of blood, fertility, lunar potency, and the number of the great goddess. Representing as it does the number of revolutions of the moon makes around the earth in a year, 13 was the number of regeneration for pre-Columbian Mexicans. In ancient Israel, 13 was a sanctified number. 13 items were decreed necessary for the tabernacle. At 13 years of age, a boy was and still is initiated into the adult Jewish community. In Wicca, the pagan goddess traditions of old Europe communi communicants convene in covens of 13 participants. Mm -hmm. In general. 13 was also auspicious for the Egyptians, who believed that the life had 13 stages, of the last of which is death, the transition to eternal life and they considered that to be a glorious transition, nothing to be afraid of. Held holy in honour of Shekinah, the female aspect of God, Friday was observed as the day of her special celebrations. Jews around the world still began the observance of the Sabbath on sunset on Friday evenings when they invite the Sabbath bride. Friday is the Sabbath in the Islamic world. Friday is sacred to Ashun. Uh, bam, bam, bam. and also Frigg, the Norse goddess of love and sex and fertility. Uh, her name became the Anglo-Saxon noun for love and in the 16th century also meaning to copulate. Friday was also associated with the mother creation goddess for whom the day was named. In Anglo-Saxon, Scandinavian, Icelandic and Teutonic cultures she was very, called variously Freya, 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 Fur, Freya, and Frigg. Friday the 13th is ultimately the celebration of the lives and loves of Lady Luck. Let us consider what fortuitous con coincidences co constitute our fate. There is uh, a great deal on there as well about the sort of why the Friday the 13th through patriarchal societies became symbolic of bad luck. So I thought for for me, and I was thinking about this yesterday, and it just it came to me to be the most natural thing in the world. For me, Friday the 13th seems to be 
Not only a time of great female power, but a time associated with, with death. Now, for me, that means that anybody who works with any inverted commas, dark goddess, any crone goddess, any goddess who has a death aspect, this must be a particularly potent time because you can embrace those energies, you can you can take back the day. It doesn't have to mean bad luck and black cats don't have to be bad luck. They can be beautiful, intelligent, gorgeous little creatures that I desperately would love 10 million of, <laughs> but can't have one. Um, so for me, today is going to be about embracing the death side or the bathe, the crone, the death and rebirth side of the Morrigan. And she's someone who I work really closely with, as you know, bathe this is. Obviously I work with the Morrigan, but for me the crone aspect of, of any goddess, but of the Morrigan in particular, obviously her being my matron, I connect so easily with crone energy, more easily than I connect with any other aspect of the goddess. I am going to make a triple goddess video, I will try and do that today because it's been requested and over the last few days I've just not wanted very much to do with people given the general atmosphere of things and there does seem to be a bit of a poisonous cloud over people in general, it's happening in in every community I've seen, it's happening in life and I think this is the perfect day to destroy, be, destroy all that negativity. I read a really interesting fact on Facebook, I think it was Gnomes and Cauldrons shared it, that in 2013 there are two Friday the 13th and they are 13 weeks apart. So beginning today and ending in 13 weeks are two days sacred to the goddess that happen to be 13 weeks apart. It's an absolutely really auspicious time to work with the death goddess or the crone goddess and just basically to destroy anything negative and allow yourself to be reborn from that. Let's clear the funk, clear the judgment, clear the arguments, clear all that negativity right out. Now I have actually used the card of death from my Stephanie Pooman law deck which is my favourite card in her deck. Now I'm going to zoom in and hopefully it will yes, line up and not fuzz out bit out, a bit more. Right, this is my favourite card from her tarot deck and it has, has ugh, it so happens that I believe that tarot is the, the death card in tarot is the 13th card of the major arcana, 13 again. So it's all relevant within in everything in this, in, in, in my sort of presentation here is relevant to Friday the 13th. So I absolutely adore this card, it's my favourite card in the Stephanie Puman Law deck and this is the death card and it's so bright and colourful and it's about rebirth, it's about the phoenix, it's about embracing that part of life and becoming something else, allowing things to fade from the ashes and be reborn to find our inner fire, to brush off that negativity and this Friday the 13th I think it's a really important time like I said, we have two Friday the 13th, 13 weeks apart. It's a, it's a time of the goddess, pure and simple, and it's time to humble ourselves before her and just clean the board of all this negativity that's going on. So wherever you may be in the world, however you might choose to celebrate, or indeed if you really do wish to hide away from Friday the 13th, then all power to you. I will share the article below. There are plenty more interesting articles on this subject, well worth a read. And that's going to be it for me for this video. Many blessings.